I am a mystical and a spiritual being. I guess I got my royal name because I am the longest of my kind, or maybe because I belong to the Hood clan. In that, I can expand my neck muscles and ribs to get into a standing position, as it were, that can put me on the level of an upright adult human. Sorry, Mr. Lion and Mrs. Tiger, I didn't mean to upstage you. For my size, I pack a good weight too. When I am not standing and fighting for my rights, I casually slither around, minding my own business, though some say I am fierce and aggressive. My skin color varies, and it can be black with white stripes or unbroken brownish gray or olive green. I can be found in the rainforests, swamps, and plains of India and China as well as the islands of Southeast Asia. I feed mainly on others of my kind, lizards, eggs, and small mammals. Although I do not have eyelids that would enable me to blink like you do, I have strong eyesight. This is due to the braille of two to three layers of scales covering my eyes like contact lenses. Isn't that fascinating? Also, I do not have external ears like you do, but my internal ears compensate and allow me to pick up or hear vibrations in the air. I also have a strong sense of smell and taste, and I have tactile receptors that help me to feel as I crawl and slither around my home on the ground or climb trees. As stated in my profile, my head has a particular geometric shape. What is it? Also, what is the shape of the lines on my skin? After which, I am sure that you can see what animal I am. Oh, and if you want to come and see the rich biodiversity of the rainforest, I have my own sports car that I can send to fetch you. I am definitely among the largest land animals in existence today. The appendage on my head tells the secret to where I was born, and you can also figure out who my ancestors are. Some of my kind are black, like me, and some of my cousins are white. Do not think that I am a slouch, though. Despite my size, I can move quite fast, even in a thicket or woodland. I have very thick skin, which falls on my flanks in folds and acts as my dermal body armor, so strong that in movies it can deflect bullets aimed at my back and shoulder flanks. At other times, my skin is sensitive, and sometimes it's like I'm wrapped in soft quilts to feel insulated like you do when it's cold and you put on your winter coat or cover up under a warm blanket. Have you heard of a knight in shining armor? Well, that's me, except that my armor is not glistening. It's muddy, but I don't mind. I love mud. Speaking of which, I would like to play rugby and I believe I have the skills especially scrimmaging, manipulating, and coordinating. However, I think I will need a coach to fine-tune these skills. Can you help? Thank you in advance. My vision is not the best, so if you visit me, I may not see you very well. But I make up for this with an excellent sense of hearing and smelling. So be careful what you say 
and what scent you are wearing on your visit. If you are bringing gifts, please remember that I am an herbivore, meaning that I love the taste of plants and not meat. You will find my friends and relatives, as well as groups of my kind in India and Nepal, in Sumatra and Borneo, as well as in Java. What am I? And can you calculate my weight in kilograms and the length of my single horn in centimeters? You may round off your answers. It only needs to be in the ballpark. While you're at it, can you calculate my white cousin's length and weight also? Have you noticed that we have different shaped lips from them? And do you know why? I am the symbol of a particular organization. And although I am big, strong, and can defend myself, I do not wrestle with my opponents. Which organization am I the face of? And speaking of face, mine is round. And my coat is of two distinct colors that covers my rotund shaped body. What are the two colors? And what geometric shape is my body? Friends, whatever you do, please do not confuse me with my distant red cousin. You will find me in China where I spend most of the day chewing on my favorite shoots and clutching them with my special finger to get an extra grip. Do you know what my main food source is? And what my special finger is called? Occasionally, I do eat a little fish and some small mammals too. I should add that if you ever visit Asia, along with throngs of others who come each year, you are likely to find me walking around with a rather clumsy gait, but enjoying the visitors, even as they enjoy interacting with me. I am not hard to find due to my large size. But I can tell you that I am loved and regarded as a kind of Chinese ambassador or an envoy of sorts. Sometimes you might hear me making a particular sound as a shout out to my friends. What is the name of this sound? You can also look out for my special ears that stick out like an antenna. Please understand that sometimes I prefer to lead a more solitary lifestyle, similar to what humans were forced to practice during the pandemic. Before you go, I would like to ask you, did you know that it is getting increasingly difficult for me to find a place to live? Yes, they are taking away my habitats in the remote mountains of China. Can you help to save my natural home? In addition, they are cutting down my favorite trees up here. And you know how much I love their sweet taste and all natural sweet things for that matter. When you come visiting, can you bring a few of my favorite shoots for me? In exchange, I will give you free life-saving lessons that you would have to pay an instructor to teach you. So far, I consider myself lucky not to be caged, 
or to be segregated from my friends and loved ones, or worse, to be poached, especially for my highly desired for. I am looking forward to meet you, and it would be a special treat if you drive the little Fiat car. You know, the one that is similar to what Pope Francis uses at times, for it is named after me. If you do not want to get lost, please ask Dr. Robinson's friend in China. Her name is Barbara Ricketts. Ask her to be your tour guide. I am sure you know what I am, but let me add that I am one of the world's most loved animals. I am a very large and heavy pack animal. And I think that's the reason for my nicknames, Beast of Burden and Ship of the Desert. I am best known for the two humps in my back. Note that I have two humps where fat is stored in my personal pantry. And when food runs out, something happens to my humps. Can you tell what happens? I hope you have figured out what I am by now. If so, please give my vital statistics, length and weight on the metric scale. My face has a particular shape. Can you tell what it is? And speaking of my face, I grow a long beard and I have special lips, but not the stiff upper lips that some humans have. Can you describe my lips? I should tell you too that I have nostrils that are like strainers. Can you tell how they protect me? Unlike you, I am able to survive the heat in very hot summer temperatures and the cold winters that are far below freezing. You may wonder how I do this. Well, this is how it works. In summer, I remove my thick coat and then in winter, I put it on again and it covers even my humps. In addition, my large sized foot pads help me to cope with the rocky and rugged terrain of my habitats, such as the Gobi and Gashon Gobi deserts. If you listen keenly, you can hear me make different sounds. Can you give me some examples? I love to eat grass and other vegetative matter. I love dates and grains like oats and wheat. However, if food gets really scarce, only then I will eat a little flesh. And so, if I combine plant matter with flesh, what is that called? Also, I am a ruminant, so I regurgitate food from my many stomachs to chew on my cud again and again, especially if I am hungry. How many stomachs do I have? My excellent sense of smell allows me to detect odors from quite a distance. How far away can I smell? And if you visit, I bet that I can beat you in any water drinking contest, even if it is salt water, for I rather love the taste of salt. I can drink a lot of water in one go. Do you know how many liters I can drink at a time? Oh, if you decide to come, remember to bring some of my favorite breakfast foods as this would be a special treat for me. And in exchange, I will give you a free ride. How is that for a bargain?
I am a royal cultural icon and the national animal of India and Bangladesh. I even appear on one of the Bangladeshi notes. Some describe me as the most regal and the biggest carnivorous wild cat. Usually, I am of burnt orange coloring with black stripes, but there are others like me with white coloring. Perhaps it's a pop-up from a recessive gene pool. The stripes on my body are unique to me, like the fingerprints of human beings. As a carnivore or flesh-eating animal, my large canine teeth enable me to do this very well. You are likely to see me at dusk and dawn. I am unsociable in that I do not move around in prides like lions. I derive my good eyesight from a binocular vision, and this helps me to assess dangers in my environment. Because my sense of smell is not very prominent, I leave scent markings to communicate with my friends. Neither is my sense of taste very strong. In fact, I possess only 500 taste buds in comparison with humans' 9,000 taste buds. My sense of sound, however, is quite strong, and I vocalize with chuffs and other sounds to disarm my predators and to attack with a sudden lounge. Though I am usually a solitary being, my kind can feel intense love and emotions at mating time. But soon, I will not have enough food to eat as humans are competing with me for some of the same food sources like deer, cattle, goats, and wild boar while others are trying to take me in captivity or for poaching. Did you know that my future is bleak? Yes, it is expected that by 2070 or around 50 years from now, I may very well be extinct due to the threats I mentioned above and also from climate change and natural disasters such as tsunamis. Note that I am not the only one in this, for King Cobra and the rhinoceros also face the tsunami threat. Would you be able to conduct research and tell me what the abbreviation TYR stands for? And did I tell you that my favorite poem bears my name? Yes, and it was written by William Blake in 1794. What is the title of the poem? I also like the new version by Ed Young, done in 2013, and it also speaks about me burning bright and about my white cousin's gene pool. What animal do you think I am? Note that back in the 1960s and 1970s, I was part of the tagline for a prominent oil company, and as it advertised, Motorists were encouraged to put me in their petrol tanks. Can you say why? <laughs> you can identify me by my long brown or blackish fur, which hangs around my body like a skirt. Also, 
by my short neck and a hump in my back. In fact, you might even be wearing a sweater spun from my yarn. My large lungs help me to adapt to the high altitudes in countries like Tibet and Nepal in the Himalayan region. Though I do not see very well, I compensate with my strong sense of smell. You might hear me making a grunt sound when I am communicating with my friends. I work a lot, just like a plow, a rake, or a tractor would, so I don't have much time to play. Like the camel, I am called a beast of burden. I just love the taste of ice and snow. They cool me down when I am feeling very hot and sweaty. However, due to climate change, the glaciers are melting at a fast rate. So pretty soon, I may not have a home. What am I? If you have identified me, then you should be able to do this little exercise. Can you calculate the temperature of my stomach's internal furnace? What about the lowest temperature that I can withstand and the highest temperature I can tolerate on the Celsius scale? Additionally, can you figure out the highest altitude where I live in meters? Yes, I am giving you some practice with metric units and you may round off your answers. Also, while you're at it, as a budding artist, can you draw a picture of me, perhaps for your refrigerator, using my introduction drawing on page 19 as a guide? I think this will make your mom and dad proud when you are telling them what I am. I am very proud of the fact that I am the national animal of a particular country where I am also known as Kalabao and regarded as a symbol of strength and perseverance. Can you name the country? They also call me a draught or a dray animal because I have a low, wide, and heavy body that is fit to haul weight. Note that this is not to be confused with a beast of burden that carries load like a camel. I have strong plowing abilities, and so I generate much power, which is utilized on the farms. And although I have poor and blurry eyesight, I am able to work very well. My horns take on a different shape from some animals. What shape is this? My meat is a delicacy and many of my side products are quite marketable too. Can you name the ones that are listed in my profile? I have an excellent memory, so please try not to do me wrong as I will remember and may avenge any attacks against me even if years have elapsed. As you may know, I am native to Asia and I prefer to make my home in certain places. Can you tell where I love to rummage for tasty treats, sometimes underwater, using my horns as forks? I have an acute sense of smell that I use to sniff out predators. If you come close, you may hear me making certain sounds. Can you give some examples? I do not really like to feel the heat. So if I am in the wild where I am free, 
I prefer to graze in the night or in the early mornings and then sleep in the daytime. However, if I am on a farm, then I am forced to work like your kind doing the regular eight-hour shift. I do not mind hard work, but too much hunting, not just for work, but worse, to slaughter for my meat and other products is worrying. Then there is further concern about the loss of habitat resulting from infrastructural and housing development. Oh, but did you see where they are planning to turn me into a superhero of sorts? Well, if you haven't, then you need to check it out. For I may just be a movie star doing some of the latest moves. I really don't mind the publicity, for it may provide a good medium to highlight my concerns to a wider audience and hopefully help to arrive at some solutions. I don't think I need to ask you what I am. And by the way, if you are going to stop by, please seek the help of well-known Filipino, Dr. Mary Joy a former student of Dr. Robinson, or Dr. Vanaha, an NSU faculty member from Malaysia. I think they will make excellent tour guides. Hope to see you soon. My home is in the forested areas of Indonesia Malaysia, and other islands of Southeast Asia, especially where there are lianas, those rope-like plants which help me to climb. I eat mainly arthropods, that is, invertebrates, or animals with no backbone, like spiders, grasshoppers, and beetles. I also love the taste of live insects and small vertebrates such as lizards and snakes. I am a small animal myself of around 6.5 inches in length or the size of a fist and so you may find it difficult to spot me. However, once you come close, you will recognize me by my very large fixed eyes that look like goggles. And this gives me excellent eyesight or high visual acuity. I cannot do a full rotation of my head, but I can do a turn of almost 180 degrees on each side. How many degrees do I have for a full view? If you are really looking for me, you could hear me singing a duet with my bow. Sounds so beautiful. And if you still do not see my big fixed eyes or hear me singing, you may see my very impressive leap. Additionally, I have scent glands that allow me to have a strong sense of smell and to communicate with my friends and family. I may be small, being one of the world's smallest primates, but also a classic case of little botalawa, as they say in Jamaica, meaning small in stature, but feisty, strong, and powerful. Let me give you an example. I can ambush my foes with a single lounge and then launch my offensive on them. Finally, some say that I am the cutest animal alive, while others say 
that my spectral cousin was the inspiration for a character called Yoda in Star Wars. Of course, I am disappointed that it wasn't me. So, if anyone out there is doing a movie and needs a fresh face for a baby Yoda, call my agents, Dr. Robinson and Dr. Walker. Also, do you agree that I am cute? If so, you can do a picture of me using my introduction drawing on page 19 as a guide and then post it on your refrigerator. I think it will make a beautiful piece of art if you ask me. So, enjoy. I have reddish brown fur and I am the largest of the arboreal mammals, that is, those living in trees. In fact, the meaning of my name is person of the forest. I have very long and powerful arms, which help me to survive in the tropical rainforest. Because of these accomplishments, some say that I am great, but I would prefer the superlative greatest due to my intelligence and skills that I use to make tools for drinking, roofs for my bed at nights, and even umbrellas when it is raining. Do you agree that I am the greatest? Also, like you, I am very hygienic. And I am also ambidextrous, like a few of your kind. What do these two words mean? Hygienic and ambidextrous. When I am grooming, visitors like to watch me and they are fascinated with my human-like abilities. Speaking of which, I have binocular and color vision like humans. But what does a binocular vision mean? Unlike humans though, if there is an odor, it is unlikely that I will detect it as my sense of smell is not very good at all. However, I can hear very well, so you do not have to shout when speaking to me, and I do vocalize by making different sounds. What are some of these sounds as noted in my profile? Some of my kind display strong feelings and emotions, especially a mother bonding with her child. My diet consists mainly of leaves and fruits, as well as bark, insects, and very little meat. So if you are coming to visit, you can bring me some nice treats. I love lychees and figs. Like you, my taste and my appetite are affected by the appearance of my food. Also, I memorize the location of my food sources so I don't stay hungry for long. You are likely to find me in Borneo and Sumatra. Do you know which animal I am? I am very important to biomedical research as I am used by scientists and medical research teams to test for diseases such as polio, HIV, aging, and obesity. Also, for folks like Dr. Robinson's sister with rhesus RH negative blood type. I am a social being. So you are likely to find me forming a troupe with my friends to have fun swinging, touching and hanging with my opposable thumb, a flexible one like yours that I use for gripping tree limbs and this feels so good. 
you can hear me giving out my hooting sound. I am generally brown and gray in color, but pink in the face. And you can locate me in many countries across the continent of Asia, such as Malaysia, India, Pakistan, China, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Japan, and other countries in Southeast Asia. I eat mainly plant-based foods like fruits, but at times I enjoy chewing on a few small creatures and birds' eggs. I don't know about you, but I just love the taste of fruits and vegetables. Have you heard of my olfactory receptor? Oh, this simply means that I have a great sense of smell. I also have excellent eyesight. And I can even see some colors like red, blue, and green. And did you know that my genetic makeup is close to that of humans? And although I contribute a lot to science and medicine for no pay, I might add, it is sad that I am losing my independence and my freedom. You see, people are capturing my free-spirited friends and keeping them as their caged pets. That is, when we are not being used as guinea pigs. Sorry to refer to you in this way, my real guinea pig friends. That is in the labs and in the fields. There are some words that describe my characteristics. Can you explain them? They are diurnal, plantigrade, digitigrade, arboreal, and terrestrial. Also, I transport my food using a storage compartment similar to the pantry you have at home. What is it called? If you would like to visit me, I can ask my husband, Jackie, and my friend, Dr. Brian, to escort you in. They both know the area well, having been on tour and having spent several years in Japan. What am I?